Hey everyone, Joe here from ActionX. Welcome to What's on the Tube. Or, if you're returning from our Rookie Season 2 episode reviews, I'm very happy to welcome you back. It has been seven months since I recorded the Season 3 predictions. It's been a long time since I talked about the Rookie. I missed it so incredibly much. And between everything that's going on in the world... I was still very thankful we were able to finish season two out properly and we didn't get some sadly rushed finale. Because again, I understand the the, the, the pandemic was a much more serious thing to tackle on than, you know, um, a freaking TV show. But I'm, I'm still very, still surprised the fact that um, when I recorded that predictions video, I was kind of hoping we'd be done with the pandemic by this point. Um, more stuff happened and then, you know... Uh, we'll talk about the more stuff happens um, next week because I think that'll be more. Um, it'll make more sense to talk about that de- de- um, then. But anyway, here we are. The cl- conclusion to the season two finale, st- the, the, the the last storyline in season two um, that we tackled on. Um, I I'm very happy on how this wrapped up. I'm very happy. I'm. I was kind of hoping for a couple of other things, which I'll get to when we tackle into the to the recap. But overall, I very much enjoyed this premiere. I think this was another another solid entry point back into the rookie. It definitely fulfilled what I wanted to see out of the story. It definitely picked up some new trails as we're going to hopefully see throughout season three. And yeah, I think they they really did a really good job. I, I think I said this when we came to the end of last time that I trust the writers in whatever direction they, they were going to finish the story up. And while I think I said in the predictions video, I said something else of what I wanted, because I'm still technically in non-spoilers, not into spoilers yet. I am still very satisfied with how they wrapped up this storyline and how I we're going to be moving forward with the, with the story going forward. But um, yeah, but before I continue, again, I am so incredibly happy to be back with y'all i i missed y'all i can't wait to start reviewing these episodes for season three i'm, I'm still a little disappointed they didn't release a season two dvd yet i don't know what's up with you um abc you gotta you gotta you gotta get that corrected plus your season one dvd is incredibly expensive anyway let's get through it can't believe i'm saying these words again let's go through the butchered recap and talk about the, the season three premiere so we immediately pick up with where ex- nearly exactly where we last left off in season two, where Nolan is surrounded by the cops, his fellow crew led by Gray. Of course, he gets a call from Gray personally saying that, hey, look, this is kind of the situation you're in. You're being accused by Armstrong that, you know, you're kind of th- you're dirty. We got a collaborator. You know, we we're going to want We're going to have to go into your house and check. And Nolan, being a smart cop, he says, he wants to do everything by the book, considering the fact this is going to be a very heavily scrutinized case moving forward. They need to do everything by the T, so they need they need the warrant. Um, they need all the permissions. Lo- Nolan needs to get a lawyer, who we already know um, who he's going to call. Not the Ghostbusters, but... So, they do that, so it gives Nolan enough time to kind of figure out from Wesley uh, what to do next. So, Wesley... Um, also, I think Wesley, um, Sean a- 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 Asmore, Ashmore, he got promoted to season three as main cast. If that is true, I was just checking the, the listings online. Um, he is a main cast member for season three. So bravo for the promotion. I consider, again, I'm, uh, jumping a little ahead of here, considering where things are going in his and Lopez's storyline. It is, I think it's very, it was a very imperative for him to be a, a series regular now. So I'm very excited. So congratulations, Sean. I uh, can't wait to see more of you in the next coming week, but for now, he um, advises Nolan that he has to, he has the enough jurisdictic, jurisdictic, eh, already, already back to me not pronouncing words. We're not even an episode in and I'm already butchering words. Um, he tells Nolan, hey, look, you're in the clear. You can move the evidence just temporarily just to, um, just to kind of give yourself a little bit of leeway, you know, so they don't use that against you. So that's what Nolan does. He tries to hide the money he found, the gun, the incriminating documents um, away. Um, he got so yeah, he, he, he does that. Meanwhile, um, Gray has Lopez get the um, the the, per- the warrant to search Nolan's premises, signed by the by the night 
the night judge. I think that's what they call him, the night judge. Um, which ironically, um, Wesley goes to go um, talk to him to kind of stop the process. Uh, meanwhile, everyone's all over the place. Like Armstrong is bleeding out. He's he's still trying to plan. Like, hey, look, no one's guilty. You need to arrest him. You need to book him. You need to get him right now because, of course, obviously Armstrong needs to win. He needs to um, get himself out of the situation so he can go back to where things were before before Nolan got involved. Um, he, Armstrong's being escorted by West, who immediately doesn't believe a freaking word he says because he knows Nolan by this point. He knows him too well. To like. No, Nolan is not 30. There is absolutely no way on the planet Nolan is 30. But of course, obviously, this is a police department. This is also the real world. You never really tr truly know anyone. So there has to be that shred of, you know, of a possibility. Hey, um, Nolan could be 30. Maybe he was playing us all along. So they have to keep that, um, they have to keep that as an option. Uh, meanwhile... Bradford and Chen, um, of course, obviously, I'm still in shock in the whole um, scenario, has to go deliver Harper back to the um, to their station. Obviously, Harper's miffed at Nolan for now telling him, telling her what he had planned to go to Armstrong's house, the whole Rosalind thing. Everything that Nolan has done in the last few hours, she's pissed off at him, but they have no choice. This is the kind of the, the cars they're dealt with, so Harper just goes along with um, Chen and Bradford to the station. So I think... By this time period, um, it's uh, also before oh, I forgot to mention. So while Nolan was calling Wesley, he Wesley was still kind of you know sleep. He was sleeping, and so he kind of was still a little drowsy. He accidentally hits a trash bin in the bathroom, which reveals a pregnancy test. The results are not clearly known yet, but we kind of assume that yeah, um, Lopez is pregnant. But before we get to that, back with the with the now the engaged soon to be parents, um, they're. Oh my god, I love the banter between them. You got the experienced lawyer and the experienced cop who are not only against each other, but they're also engaged. It's just so hilarious. Um, the judge sides with Lopez because given the circumstances, yeah, um, they need the, the evidence right away. So conveniently time, Wesley calls Nolan to say, hey, look, judge has, judge has cleared the permit. You, I hope you got enough time. I'll meet you at the station, you know, because this is where we need to go next. Nolan lets... Everyone into the, his house. Gray just is, is, is in shock and still in the whole scenario. But he goes to put um, Nolan into custody just to escort him back to the station. So I believe this is where, yeah. So Nolan and Harper are both at the station. Nolan's doing the usual search with the others. Harper is, gonna be, is being interrogated by Eternal Affairs. And... Also, yeah, I forgot the uh, I forgot his I forgot the actor's name. I seen him on the hundred. He was on Aquaman. I forgot his actor's name. Uh, he's Wes's father. He's the apparently I, I I never knew what his title was in the police department. He's the commander or he's the leader of the internal affairs unit. So he gets he asks his, um, Harper, "Hey, look, this is tell me what's going on because like you know I, you know this is this entire case is all over. You have Armstrong, an experienced veteran in the in the force." Against Nolan, who has had a couple of hiccups, but you know, all in all, everyone just calls Nolan like the best. The and that's the thing. That's the whole theme of this episode. Nolan is the best of us, and I know Nolan is our protagonist. I get that, but it still harkens to true that yeah, Nolan is our is our hero. He is the best strong moral compass because not to say anyone else around him isn't perfect, but you know, I think out of all of them, Nolan is the more experienced one. Not by the, the the profession, but just in life. He knows what is a good human being. He knows how to do the right thing. He, he's just responsible. So I'm not surprised a lot of his closest allies, are the stars, the other stars of the show, they're not convinced that Nolan didn't do it. And that's definitely something that I think obviously going into this episode, I knew Armstrong, he kind of knew like it was going to be really freaking difficult for him to sway anyone else's vote. So... I think I, I kind of sub, su, um, subvertly knew that, yeah, Armstrong it wasn't going to convince everyone. I think he knew that. He was just kind of hoping the system would do its place before then. But to get back on track here, so um, Wes's father is not pleased with Harper after she revealed. This was the investigation that she and Nolan did into Armstrong back, back in the season two finale. This, this is what he did. And Wes's father goes on, I think, something that we're definitely going to see in a in a bigger role when we when we continue this season is he is not happy with Harper not because of the whole scenario about her action about not telling anyone else by not informing this like again i understand like yeah i mean they said this before in the finale like, 
accusing Armstrong, a veteran and an unblemished record, and also a man who has been through so much personal trials to in his career, it's it was a very big leap and a big risk if they accused him of this, and then if they were not, weren't able to get what they needed, Armstrong would have immediately targeted them. And I get that. We, we As viewers, we understand the severity of the situation Nolan and Harper were in in the finale. But to Wes's father's point, he has a point as well. Like, yeah, but there's systems in place. But the problem is, is that we've seen, I've seen plenty of times in movies and other TV shows, that there, there is a system for things that we should trust in the system. But sometimes people cheat the system and they just override the system to the point where like they can beat it. And that's in the case of Armstrong, like, you know, Rosalind somehow knows, we'll, we'll get back to Rosalind in, in a bit, but she knows everything about Armstrong, about all his contingencies, contingencies and escape routes. So it was never going to be an easy thing for um, them to do, but he had a better chance than Nolan had, you know, Nolan and Harper went the straight route, like, hey, we have a suspicion, this is our proof, and probably, I'm going to guess, they probably would never had gotten any of the re- remaining evidence we, we were going to see in this episode, had it not been for what Nolan Harper did, you know, but I do understand Wes's father's point. I do get that point. But, and you know, that there, there has to be more faith in the system, more trust in the system, whether that it's also, it's also, it's true in the show and also kind of into this, to, to what's going on in our world right now. So definitely setting up the seeds for, um, the rest of season three. Um, so I believe from here, we get to the interrogation between the, um, I'm not calling Commander West. I'm, I'm too tired of calling him West's dad. Commander West, Nolan, Nolan, <clears throat> Nolan, I haven't done this in a while, I'm sorry. Nolan and West and Wesley. Yeah, confusing how they have, they have a, we have a char- two characters with the last name West, and then you introduce another character with the name Wesley. I'm not sure if they didn't have, I, I don't know, I, I, I don't know anymore. Um, so, um, yeah, so they, inter- um, initially the plan was like, Nolan wasn't going to speak a word, Wesley is going to take point on this, but then Commander West is like, nope, here's a paper, here's this law, here's this rule, like, you need to, you need to speak, I, you have to answer all my questions, you do not have the right to remain silent anymore, you have to speak to me, which no one agrees to. So all they do, so I think we cut a little forward ahead in the story where Nolan is kind of telling him his side of the story and what's going on. I think they get up to the point to where, why Nolan ran away um, out of Armstrong's place instead of quote, finishing the job, and no one's like, he was honest, like, you know, his meeting with Rosalind definitely shook him up a little bit with the whole, hey, Armstrong has been doing this for decades ahead of you. He has experience. He knows how to beat you. And considering the fact no one just barely survived a gunfight with Armstrong, and now he had this realization that, like, Armstrong's going to frame him, I'm not surprised. Yeah, of course. Obviously, no one was going to like run away. I would definitely do the same thing because like I was more focused on my life than in that moment than to finish the job or make sure Armstrong was secure. I would have definitely run away back to my house just to make sure like where the fuck is this evidence? Um, also, during while this time period is happening, um, Shannon, Shannon, um, Bradford get reassigned to Nolan's house the, the the to look for evidence. And well, initially. I was like, Nolan probably made a mistake somewhere in hiding the evidence, and then it turns out we see a garbage bag that got thrown over the hill into the neighbor's property. I was like, Nolan, this could not have been so much simpler. Because yeah, again, Nolan knew like, yeah, I, this is not in the in the in the warrant the warrant um limits, so they would have had to get a whole another warrant for that piece of trash. But Chen knew like smartly enough, like no, this no one knows the system too. There's absolutely no way he was just gonna throw the garbage bag in in plain sight. And obviously, then he just put in the water heater, and I had no idea the water. <laughs> okay, here's a stupid thing about me. I know I own a water heater. I know that, but I, I don't know how. I, I never looked in the side of a water heater. I just completely forgot there was water in a water heater. I'm so sorry. I'm stupid. I know. I'm uh, getting that out of the way. So they find the bag of money, which cooperates Nolan's side of the story. So things are looking okay for Nolan for now. And so from then, um, great, um, Commander West reassigns them to go talk to Rosalyn to see what um, she and Nolan were talking about yesterday the, in the last episode. So um, they go off to do that, but it's a little bit risky for Chan considering the fact Rosalyn had such a major involvement 
in her her kidnapping and her uh, her being held hostage in the barrel back in the mid season finale last year. So there's a bit of a little bit of a shaky history there. So wh- whether or not she's ready for that, we don't know yet. But nevertheless, um, they go, they agree to tackle on that assignment. Um, so I think from there, um, no one has. Here's the thing about I love about Nolan. Nolan is a very straightforward man. Um, he's very honest, good moral compass. And then he has this half brain scheme where it's like, hey, listen, I know we're focused on the Armstrong thing. And he just co- clearly reminded me and I, I think a bunch of the other viewers. There's a whole other crime fair family that's behind Armstrong that's still responsible for the other two cops that were killed in the in episode 19 last season. And I'm like, oh, damn, I forgot about them. We were just so, and I was just so concern about this situation and what's coming up in the show that I completely forgot there's a whole nother crime family they have to deal with so no one's planning if, if they can get them to cooperate to Armstrong being a, being the mole through the higher the, through the head who hired who got Armstrong involved in the first place then that would be enough to acquit no one of the charges and of course obviously Commander West is like hell no you're already in enough shit as his just let the system do its work because if something goes sideways, you're done. You will be out. And then Nolan, being pure Nolan fashion, still wants to do it. And he appeases to Gray to do this. And Gray gives, I think, the best line of the episode. Gray has, is just MVP. This episode. He's just delivering the bang up line. In serious matters and in comedy matters, this man is a fucking gold mine. He, t- he hears what Nolan has to say. And he's like, in the 25 years I've been in the LAPD, you have been the biggest pain in my ass. And I'm, I, I, I kid, I, I, I laughed so hard. And it's like, damn, 25 years and Nolan was his, I mean, I, okay, sure, what, I, I agree with it. But he's, he signs off on it, you know, to do the wiretap. And Wes, he's just like, I quit. You are just taking the opposite of my advice. I quit. I'm not doing this anymore. Um, but it does bring a reason for um, Wesley to be at the station where Lopez is starting to exhibit signs of her pregnancy. She's throwing up all over the place. She finally admits to Wesley uh, about it. Apparently, the reason why she didn't tell him yet because she didn't. It's not that she doesn't want the baby. She definitely wants it. The thing is, she had like a certain plan in mind where she finally found the love of her life, and she's about to get the career of her dream. So she was gonna have both flies and have some sort of like damn. My, uh, my um, covers, my light covers fell through. Um, that's good enough. Yeah, uh, sorry, sorry. I'm just fixing that. Okay, yeah, yeah, there we go. There. Okay, so she wants to have <laughs> both lives. She wants to have the perfect romance, personal life, and the perfect um, career life. And she almost had it. And then the baby's going to like... Because here's the thing. I think I said this on another show before. Probably some. Oh my god, this fucking light source has been killing me already. George said um, he bought me a light, a light, a light stand for my, um, a, I think for my birthday or something like that. It's been three months since my birthday. No offense. I know George and I've been very busy, so we haven't been able to see each other. Uh, but yeah, I could really use a light stand now. Of course, obviously, you're telling yourself, why didn't I buy a light stand? Um, uh, because I didn't. Because I'm lazy, and also they're very, very cheap and very sensitive with my monies. This this light source is not working. Um. So, I think it's going to hold for now. Um, so, Lopez tells her that, that, that tells him, like, having a kid's going to definitely, oh my god, I'm going to talk while I fix this. Uh, he, that a kid's definitely going to, like, ruin the habit, and yeah, it is. It's not easy to have a kid. I don't have a kid, per se, but I've, I've heard experiences of, like, yeah, kids are going to definitely um, change your whole, they're going to change your lifestyle. And then, you know, obviously, starting a whole new career, well, a, a whole new career path, as well as, you know, being in a, um, in a marriage, it, like a fresh marriage, it is very much of a, hey, you know, um, there's too much going on. I mean, yeah, I mean, you're you're about to have changes in your life, but the problem is, is that it's all happening too fast. Like you can't have so many changes going on because then, how can you adjust to it? And I think that's the thing that um, I understand. I, I get with Lopez that she didn't want to tell him just yet because she wants to think think about it. Because like, is he gonna be wanting to um? accept it if he, is he wanting to um go and uh you know you know go along for this entire oh my freaking god i am so sorry that's it you know i'm gonna get some i'm gonna get this remote control hopefully this will work i mean it solves the the falling problem but it's not solved my hey this 
I need I need to get a new life stand. Um, if George, if you're watching this, ship it to me. Um, anyway, so okay, so anyway, yeah, I've, I've been on this topic too long. Lopez is not, but um, Lopez um, was unsure of it. But Wesley's like, we're gonna make it work. It's gonna be fine. You know, we'll make it all work because they're the they're the dream team. You know, you you can't mess with the dream team. So, I think from there, yeah. So where do we go from here? I think they released Nolan. Not I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut around him. Uh, so Chen and Bradford head to the um, to go talk to Rosalind. Um, Bradford attempts to send Chen away to go th- do something else, but Chen's like, "No, I have to do this. Like, if I can't even confront Rosalind, then I shouldn't be a cop." So Bradford's like, "Okay, you know, you got a point." So she comes along. Um, so yeah, and like, oh my god, this scene was so freaking good because like Rosalind admits she was watching the entire time Chen was in the barrel. And she sings the same song as she did um, in that episode, as well as as well as we got footage from that episode. I'm like, this is giving Chen such major PTSD right now, like a, such a major flashback to like one of the w- lowest points of her life. And you know, they they call it quits because like you know, there's Rosalind's not going to give them any more information, except she does a little bit that she's that Armstrong has contingencies to his contingencies. He has a backup plan after his backup plan, so. It's bound that he's going to have some sort of getaway. I'm going to have some sort of plan to escape. Not, not in those exact words, but something similar to that. So um, so they get the clue. They're like, hey, he might have hid like some sort of like money bag or just something to escape, you know, to start a new life somewhere. So Bradford goes to assign Lopez to that. Um, Nolan's plan goes into action. They He leaves the station. He um, calls the head of the the crime family who initially is like hell no there's absolutely no way get get off my floor and he's like listen my life is about to be over i need your help i need something to to, to still have some semblance of a life he 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 he, he, he agrees and he uh, tells no one like be on standby we'll call you when we're ready so nolan gray um go off um with a team to go get this guy to kind of get this um, confession that they need. Harper was going to join them on the assignment, but since Harper's already on a very heavy um, I, 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 um, eye lenses right now with the whole um, self-investigation thing, um, they had to bench her. So she was a, li- a little bit defensive, but then she understands the severity of the situation. Like the point right now is to get no one out of this. So this is what they got to do. I believe, yeah, so, oh, also in the meantime, Armstrong is in the hospital. He's trying to convince, he's trying to get updates on what's going on. He needs to know that, like, Nolan and Harper are done. They're going to be arrested. Armstrong's in the clip. He needs to hear that. And he, every, and and then, so, he was, and at first, in, like, the first scenes, like, he was very, like, kind of angsty. Because, like, why isn't he arrested yet? Why isn't he, you know, you know, done, like, locked away yet? And, and then Wes says a very good line. It's like, Wes kind of, like. Like, he starts to break apart Armstrong's, you know, statement. Because, like, since Wes knows both Nolan and Armstrong, like, he knows Nolan would never do this action. And Armstrong's trying to play it off. It's like, well, we don't know them. And then when Armstrong, when they both leave, the, when Wes and his, um, and I think, oh, Smithy. Smithy. I, I, I love that name. Um, when they leave the room, Armstrong's like, <laughs> sorry. Sorry if you can hear that on camera. Um, on the, I'm like, I'm sorry. He's like, damn it. So close. I need. I need he needs something. He needs like the, He needs them to be, be put be put away, that sort of thing. And then there's like a news report about the whole situation. He like he's smiling like yeah he, he he's in custody like they got him, like he knew like oh, oh I'm safe. Once this bully rooms, <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm like acting like a sinister villain. It's like I just love it when villains think they're winning and then they get that moment. It's like no no it was so close and we got it when Rosalind is revealed to have like a very cheap burner phone in her cell and she calls Armstrong and she ba- I initially felt like she was going to warn him ahead of time like oh hey this is what they're doing to you it's like no I want no. Rosalind wants to watch Armstrong burn it's like this is my chance for you to go to prison I told them everything about the secret hole in your house and about your secret escape bat which conveniently enough Lopez also discovers while no one was leaving to go meet up with the with the crime family, and Armstrong's reaction was like was freaking perfect, just perfect. So yeah, um, so so yeah, so I think that wraps up everything. So we get so but we'll go back to the Nolan to, to the main thing. So Nolan goes off to meet with them. He's get the, he gets a call to confirm everything. So 
He heads straight to the meeting spot. They tell him to drop his pants. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to say that joke. They, they, they made him drop his pants. Made him change like a, a burner outfit, as I'll call it. So they put up, like, well, I don't get why why crime, why crime criminals always, like, put the bags over the head. I never get that. But um, they put Noah in the van. They pull him away. Um, everyone's following them. But once they get word that Armstrong um, escaped his hospital room without being detected, they have to pull Nolan out of, the, out of it because, like, there's still now the risk that Armstrong's involved. Plus, there's a pretty decent case against him to destroy his credibility since, like, we had him escaping the hospital and we have this this escape bat, escape bat in his wife's grave. Like, and that's another, thing, that's another screwed up thing. He puts his escape bag on top of his wife's grave. So messed up. Um... So they try to go get Nolan back, but as soon as they're pulling over the van, it, it turns out they swapped already, so they, Nolan's in a different vehicle, which they're not tracking. So they we cut back to Nolan in some sort of junkyard or something. Uh, he meets with the family, and initially he, he thinks that, like, hey, I got this, like, I'm going to get into this. And it turns out now they know they know Nolan was bullshitting the whole time because uh, Armstrong somehow meets up with them, and Armstrong's so ready to kill him. However, it turns out no one immediately realized, like, wait, no, this is too easy. And, of course, obviously, Armstrong's gun that he was given was not loaded. So it turns out the whole plan for the family was to eliminate both John and Armstrong. Because there's absolutely no way Armstrong is going to be a reliable mole anymore in the, in the department. So they had to get rid of him, too. So Armstrong gets shot while Nolan runs away. No one, by the way... Freaking badass in this scene. He he's dodging bullets. He's taking down dudes. He's got the gun. Um, he's he smartly puts over a mask over that was one of the henchmen's to get close to the leader. So I don't know how he took down so many people by himself, but damn, whatever he was doing for su the Suicide Squad, fucking works. So he gets he gets the leader, and the leader kind of goes down pretty easily. I was kind of hoping that they would um they would go a little bit fast, uh, a little bit more um. Um, I don't know. I, I know. I know he was kind of like a random gang, gang leader. But I don't know. I was kind of hoping for like a, like a little bit of a confrontation, but oh well. And no one tells him like strip. <laughs> like you made me strip. You're gonna strip too. I'm like, damn. No one's a savage. So no one goes to check on Armstrong, and sad to say, Armstrong died. Like between the bullet, the, between this and now all that, he, he he's dead. He, he he's dead. I'm like, damn. I was really hoping he goes to prison. Like he. He, he almost played our boy Nolan. Um, so, yeah, I was kind of disappointed in that. So, But then after that, we cut to back to the station. Nolan's back there. Harper's back there. Gray's having their ass, having a field day with them. Because, like, given the entire severity of the situation, despite them being framed, the their actions before and after were not condoled. They can't be unpunished. So... Um, Nolan's punishment is basically, well, what's his punishment? Yeah. So Nolan's punishment that they were going to both get letters of reprimand, which are pretty much death sentences for a potential career, as well as no one has to stay an extra month in the TL program. And then he has to take another test by the board to prove he's ready to, you know, be a patrol officer as well as. Gray basically tells him, look, there is no chance for you now to be a detective or anything else. Because this letter basically destroys any sort of trust you would have built. And it, despite everything that happened, Nolan's credibility is shattered. So, that that that's the downside. Like, Armstrong is done. They took care of the mole. The, fan, the crime family is basically done. At the cost of Nolan's reputation. Like, we know that as in our core rookie group, they still trust him. But in the eyes of the police department, he did so many questionable actions to... I know he he did the right thing in the end, but it was just the method he had to do to get there is what was... it. What, what was not, the, what was not um, allowed. So, um, that was a no-go. But no one takes it as a bright spot because, like, you know, still... The day has been saved. They stopped the bad guys. Um, so no, everyone's just like, I'm going home. Um, Chen just has it. I feel they would brag about the whole trust thing. Like if you, you don't think you know anyone, which of course Chen was right in that moment. Um, West is talking with his dad about like, hey, despite everything that happened, you know, we're, things are going to get better eventually. 
Um, yeah, Harper, Nolan and Harper go back home. And before Lopez and uh, Wesley get to leave the station, Gray stops them to tell them that Lopez has been officially approved to be a detective. So she's going to be a detective. She's being transferred. So hooray for Lopez. But she was about to tell Gray about her pregnancy. But she says like she didn't want. She doesn't want to be known as the pregnant detective on day, uh, the the pregnant detective on day one. So she they both decide to keep it a secret from now on until they're obviously going to show visible signs of the pregnancy. So um, they're going to wait on that, and then the episode ends with no one returning home. Um, still kind of like it it, it. it the war was won, but they suffered so many losses on the way. No one definitely now has to pick up the pieces. But before that, Nolan gets a call from Rosalind. Uh, that Rosalind's congratulating him on defeating Armstrong, but Nolan doesn't think he won anything. So he basically tells Rosalind to fuck off. But the one thing that now we're going to have to deal with, and I hope to God they're going to play into this when we um, continue this season, uh, is that because Armstrong did so many bad things, he was a mole under... The whole, but we by for such a long time, his credibility is going to basically reopen every single case he's been on, which includes the Rosalind case. So whether or not it's going to mean she's going to get out, I don't know. But I'm sad to say we might not have seen the last of Rosalind, but hopefully we we did. But no one hangs up the phone. He promises to call the police station, the um, the the prison, the prison to kind of confiscate her phone. And Rosalind's like, I know. I was just, I took the risk because I want to hear your voice one more time. And so hopefully I thought, I think hopefully that was the last time we see that, see her. And Nolan, and I think as symbolized in symbolization, what the rest of the season is going to be, he starts to clean up the mess. So I think that's a symbolization that Nolan's going to begin cleaning up everything that's happened in the wake of this storyline. And then that's how we end the season three premiere of the rookie. Um, so yeah, boil down. Yeah, I, I still really like this episode. I think this is a very solid premiere. Uh, my only two biggest, not let down, more, more like what I was kind of hoping for. I, I really wanted to see Armstrong go to prison. I wanted to see a scene where he's behind bars and no one's, and knowing that he lost. I think I would have loved to see that, just like that scene. But I, I mean, you know what? It is what it is. I mean, I, I would have loved for Armstrong to kind of be like that background villain. Like, if he ever gets out. I, I don't think I would have. Like, because the thing is, The Rookie is not a TV sh- a superhero show where, like, Armstrong's going to get out and he's going to, like, join the, the crime syndicate or some shit like that. I don't think that was in the cards. But I would have liked it to be like that. But you don't get what you want always. Uh, so, yeah, the thing I said in the Season 3 prediction video, I was kind of hoping that this main conflict doesn't go away in the first in one episode so yeah they did that um but i think the rep the repercussions is going to be echoed and the aftermath is going to be felt I-, I think at least in the first half of the season so we'll see how it goes we'll see how the rest of the season goes but right now i think they re- did such a solid job of wrapping up the storyline putting no in such a much more difficult place than ever before putting everyone's, you know, loyalty into Nolan into question. And my God, I think the first 25 minutes were some of the most tense scenes in the show's history besides the mid-season premiere. And I kid you not, the way the the crew, the cast, performed in those scenes and how they edited it all together, it made me feel stressed. And it's so freaking good if the show can make you feel tension. So I give... Superb credit to everyone involved in that. So, with that being said, I give this episode two thumbs up. I really recommend it. It's such a strong season premiere. I don't know how many episodes we're getting. Hopefully, we're getting another 20. But with COVID and everything, who knows? But I love this episode. I think they did such a great job. So, bravo. And, yeah, I think that's going to do it for me. So, if you're unaware, this has been... What's in the two where we're reviewing in this segment every rookie season three episode review. But if you want to know what else is going on on what's in the two, uh, we're not yet there yet. But I'm just going to say casually, we are going to review Nancy Drew season two and Walker in a couple weeks. Well, I'll be be more into detail when we start with those review series. But right now, it's just 
the rookies. So if you're only here for rookie season three reviews, then you're in luck we, because we will be reviewing every single episode of the rookie season three. So we will be back. I'm so happy to say it. We'll be back next week with, a, with another review. I am so happy that we're back. I'm so happy. But yeah, so yeah, so we'll be back next week. Um, um, next next week Monday morning with the next see the next episode review. So stay tuned for that. Um, but again, if you're unaware, this has been What's in the Two from Action X. If you want to see more of What's in the Two, specifically our Rookie Season Three episode reviews, please subscribe to Action X on YouTube.com. Ring the bell for notification when our next episode review is live. Like, favor, share this review if you really want to support it. It does help us out a lot. As well as follow us on Twitter uh, to be up to date on any sort of update that happens. Follow us on Twitch if you want to see us stream some games. But if you only, but but uh, again, for you, the Rookie Nation, I missed you so much again. I missed you. I can't wait to continue the Season 3 journey with y'all. So come along with me and welcome home. I'll see you guys next week. Finally. But until then, stay safe out there. Be good to each other. As, and as always, peace out.